Hello everyone. In this very first build video, I am going to bring you along and show you how I do seat bottoms out of carbon fiber and seat backs out of Vortex cloth. Okay, before we get started, I thought I'd share a quick preview on what's coming up in this build video. Uh, we're just going to kick it off with the seat backs. So I've got a buddy of mine, Chris, who decided to come help out with this. And pretty much anybody who's worked with Oratax uh, understands the value in having some help. I don't know how it's possible to do it on your own. I think the, uh, the Oratex guy is probably the only one. Um, anyway, a couple tips I have that are, I think, um, pretty good ones here. The first is watch Colby Osborne's videos on Oratex cloth. I mean, he goes into some great detail, perhaps more so than the, uh, the Oratex folks. Uh, over at Better Aircraft Fabrics. Um, I probably didn't take good enough notes because I made some mistakes myself. Um, but anyway, that's a good tip. The second tip is these two sheets you see here of Vortex cloth, those are two samples. Um, and I didn't realize that the sample sizes they sold were big enough to do a job like this. So that was kind of a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, they come in a roll and a little jar of glue kind of like you see here. So anyway, that, that's kind of why they're two separate colors. I bought the samples just to get an idea of the color, um, not realizing I could actually use them. Anyway, here, another mistake I made, you can see my dirty old leather gloves there. Um, those put quite a bit of debris into the glue. I picked up on that relatively quick, so uh, a new pair of dedicated gloves are on order for this job. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the leather I used there for welding came in real handy, and I think even with gloves, I'd end up using that. Um, these radiuses, those were, I think, like everybody else that works with this material, a huge challenge and uh, took the most amount of time. But overall, doing these rear seat backs took, uh, I think, uh, if you don't include the, the dry time of the glue, um, took about a couple hours, and, and that was it. Um, it's also, if you're planning on working with Ortex, it's a great opportunity to, to practice it. And I think uh, if eventually it does kind of come loose on you, you can, you can feel it right away on your, on your seat back. So it might be a kind of a good indication you need to check some other stuff. Uh, or perhaps you made some mistakes. If you're looking for more detail on this, definitely check out the work that Colby Osborne did in his videos. All right, I'm going to jump right into the seat pans. Um, for both the rear seat and the two front seats. I've got here a flat piece of glass that I'm going to use as a layup mold for the two front seats. And then I took a stab at making a mold for the rear seat pan. And so I'll see how well this works. Um, it is in pretty rough shape. I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, there's some compatibility issues. It's got some spots that might show up. Um, but in the end, it's going to get covered by foam and the seat covers, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, let's see, I did paint the frames black where they're gonna be exposed. On the frame for the airplane, I'm probably not a fan of a dark color, just in case I wanna inspect welds for cracks and all that stuff. A uh, dark color will hide that, whereas a light color uh, will expose any problems that might come up later on. So at least for the seat frames, those will be black. Let's see, so first thing I need to do is I need to do a wax base. So I'm gonna use a Partol paste number two, and that'll be my uh, mold release wax. And then afterwards, I'm going to follow up uh, with a PVA release film. So that'll be both on the glass and on the mold. And once I've done that, I need to do some templates get all my carbon fiber sheet prepped. I am going to do a carbon fiber wrap on four sides of each frame. Uh, let that get tacky, and then I'm going to do the layup on the molds and fold them in. And that way I get rid of any hardware um, that would be needed to screw or rivet panels in. Um, it'll just be, I think, a more secure connection uh, and less weight. So anyway, let me get started. First up is the Partol wax. So this stuff can be difficult to work with if you let it go beyond the dry time. I believe that's about a minute. Uh, if you're not paying attention and you let it go beyond a minute, it really takes a lot of elbow grease to get that stuff out. 
Um, but that was two coats of the Partal wax there. Uh, here I'm just kind of super gluing the ends of the brush to keep the hairs from coming off into the PVA. And I do that whenever I'm working with composites. It uh, just avoids having those little hairs come off into your parts. The PVA can be brushed on or sprayed on. Here I'm just slopping it on and then following up with a really cautious fine stroke to keep streaks out of the final part. I went ahead and made templates here out of wrapping paper. This is the template for the front seat, so I'm going to cut two, uh, two layers out of this template. And one of the unique, I, I suppose, designs of this part is that the edges along the template will be kind of uh, about the exact dimensions of the final part. And so there's very little trimming to be done in the final part. That being the case, I have to secure those edges while the carbon is dry. And to do that, I'm using this veil material with the uh, 3M77 spray-on glue. And what that does is when I cut the carbon, the edges stay clean. And then I can wet the carbon up, lay it up, and uh, the edges aren't kind of randomly just uh, unorganized and coming apart. Uh, so that's what the spray tech and the veil is for. Same deal for the rear seat. I used a wrapping paper template. I did the veil to keep the edges neat and tidy. And I did do a first attempt at this uh, rear seat pattern. And the first pattern I used was incredibly complex. It wrapped around the frame in, in multiple areas to try and cover as much of it as I could. And what I found was even with the veil, that became uh, really sloppy and didn't look clean whatsoever. So the, the, my second attempt here, which is what you guys are seeing, is a, a more simplified approach to it. And uh, I think overall that was a lot more successful in, in keeping the final parts uh, looking clean. Okay, let's have a look at what I need to do next. I've got the carbon fiber all cut up. The edges are reinforced, so that's good. Those edges are going to stay clean. Um, ultimately, what I'm going to do is uh, put this upside down on the mold, lay the fabric down, um, and then curl the fabric around so that it bonds with the whole frame. Um, but what I'd like to do before I do that is I want to, uh, let's see, I want to do a wrap around the bar and this is not where the wrap goes but just as an example so I'm going to come around and I'm going to do an overlap and so that way the wrap around the bar is going to be two layers thick um, so I'll have a two layer thick wrap in epoxy and I'll let that get just slightly tacky and then I'll take the frame, um, mix up some new epoxy, and curl the carbon fiber mat around the wrap. And so essentially what I'll have is I'll have, I've got some tape there, I'll have four layers thick around the perimeter, and then I'll have the two layer thick um, fiber, uh, carbon fiber cloth, and then the wrap, so these are left quite long, around the edge is going to be four layers thick. So it'll be two layers thick in the middle, four layers thick around the edge, and four layers thick um, where it bonds with the frame. And so the seat pans hopefully will never have to come off. Uh, I did already have to remove one because <laughs> I goofed up. So anyway, I'm going to cut uh, the templates I've made here out of the 2x2 two two twill. So I'm going to get started. I've done enough composites by now to understand the value of a really good pair of scissors, and they do get expensive, but this electric wheel cutter you see me using takes it to a whole other level. So the, there are some tools worth their weight in gold, and that is one of them. Okay, I think I'm good with that.
This was my first attempt at making a seat pan, the one that I actually had to remove and redo. But you can see how one of the lessons I learned was to roll the wraps up before I put them on. And that enabled me to uh, better pull kind of tightly on the wrap as I rolled it around. And in this case, I'm doing that. I, I just put two kind of wraps around that frame. And then after that, I was able to pull and tug on the carbon while rolling it around the frame to get it nice and tight there. And then, of course, the overlap of the wrap is midway through, and that gives me the, the two layers around that frame that I was shooting for. Now, I'm not entirely sure that this step in the process is necessary, but it definitely made me feel a lot better having an additional two layers wrapped around the frame tightly where, uh, where it bonds around the perimeter. Let's get started. Oop, that was a lot. That was a lot. I'll try to work it in there anyway. Well, if I could go back and do it all over again, there would be one thing I would change about the front seats, and that would have been to remove the veil material before laying up that, that next sheet you see me doing there. Um, and pretty much by this point, it's already served its purpose. It's kept the edges neat and tidy um, while being cut and during the wet out process, uh, and there's really no need for it anymore. What I did notice is that it, it required a lot more resin in the veil to bond uh, the two fabrics together. And in a few spots in my, uh, in my final part, I do have a, a failure to bond between uh, the sheets in a couple of areas. It, it's not enough to concern me to do the, this all over again, um, but it's just one of those things I would have changed. Uh, so here I'm, I'm placing the frame onto the mold and I'm trying to get everything just right where I want it. Um, I'm going to have a full overlap of those tails that will fold over on top of the wrap that I put in earlier. Uh, so you, you won't see the wrap at all in the, in the final layup. So right here I'm being careful as I fold the tail over not to pull the frame or the mold out of position. And then I'm just kind of giving it a, a cinch and a twist. And with the, the tackiness from the wrap that I put in uh, at an earlier step, I think that gave me a little more kind of uh, stick there because I, I could feel as I rolled it over that it would, it would you know, stick and stay put. So now I'm doing the other side. And on this side, I'm able to, to tug things pretty tight. And you can see me removing the veil in the, in the areas that I can get to. I kind of picked up on the fact that it wasn't wetting out quite like everything else. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I got it removed on the tails at least. Uh, here I'm pulling it tight, sticking it on. And this, ironically, is a lot like the Oratex I did at the beginning, where you're, you're heating it up and stretching and sticking it into the glue. Um, very similar here. And uh, yeah, I'm wetting out some of the tails because they were beyond the mold surface or the glass there. And uh, so I just, that didn't bother me that they were dry in advance because I knew I'd be folding them over into the template area. 
Uh, the squeegee here also uh, a huge bonus in terms of tools. Um, as I'm pressing it into the wrap from the previous step, I'm also kind of pushing it down to, to make that connection there as tight as I can. Uh, again, removing veil here. And uh, yeah, that, that the whole thing moved on, on the bag, so I was lucky there that the frame didn't move while I was pulling on that and not being very careful. Again, tugging that thing tight, pressing it in, and rolling it over. You can also see here with the squeegee how I'm, I'm pressing it down and then kind of pushing it in a little bit. But if you go in too far, it, it could lift the frame up off of the mold there. So there, there's kind of a sweet spot. And then here I'm doing the, the last final section. And, and you can see how I kind of push it in to tuck it into uh, the two layers that are sitting on the mold itself. So around the perimeter, there were four areas where it was just two layers thick. And I wanted to stiffen the perimeter of the seat pan up. So I used a, a bit of scrap there, uh, laid them in dry, wetted them out with the brush. Again, the bristles have been super glued before I started, so I didn't get any hairs coming out into the part. That's a good sign. Some cracking. That is a good sign. <laughs> Hard to screw up a flat panel. <clears throat> a little bit of patience with it. Hey, that's gonna pop right off. That's either a thin film of the resin or that's the PVA coming up with it. Yeah, look at that. That's the PVA. So that is going to release from the mold. <laughs> Perfect. So that's pretty shocking, actually, because, um, again, some of the repairs I had done on that mold uh, with the Bondo, I thought for sure, would come up, um, but I guess that's just a testament to how well the PDA works. That is beautiful. There it is. There you have it, a fully bonded no hardware, lightweight seat pan. Let's see if that comes off of there. Oh yeah. That's coming off. Nice. All right, that's the full set. Just about finished. All right, that's the passenger front seat. Got a little bit of trimming to do. This one's already been trimmed. Just around the edges, taking away any of the carbon fiber splinters or sharp features. That's the pilot seat.
And there we've got the rear seat. All right, I am really happy with the results, um, but there are a couple things that I need to take care of that uh, got by me during the layup process. One is this uh, lower edge right here. It's a little too, um, I guess, flexy, for the lack of a better term. It's not stiff enough um, for really what I'm after. I did have my wife sit in it. All right, grab it. So this is gonna be your seat, oh, right? Wait, wait. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> This is going to be your seat in the plane? This is going to be Gromit's seat in the plane. You're not getting on it just yet, though. Well, it didn't break. No. No. My um, butt is not on the floor. So all the back pressure's up here, not down here. But I'm going to stiffen this up anyway. Um, and probably give it a little bit of um, curve for, uh, for cushions that might go over it later. And then... Also, there is quite a bit of flexing in the lower seat pan. I am going to add in some uh, strips, and then I'm gonna put one strip of Kevlar in here because of how thin it is. I'm a little nervous it could crack, and I wouldn't want that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Kevlar onto the seat pan. I am going to sand this section right here, and then, uh, I'm gonna sand this whole section right here. And these lines here kind of represent um, a staggering of the layers. So I'm not transitioning from two layers to five layers um, immediately. You know, that would, that would be an area that might lead to a crack. So I'm gonna stagger the layers. I'm gonna add a piece of foam here. Uh, so I cut this guy out. It's like, um, I don't know if you can tell by that, but it's kind of like a teardrop shape. Um, it's got a sharp, steep, well, not steep, but it's, it's got a sharp descent right here with a sharp point. And then this edge is kind of curved over. And so I'm planning on playing around with some foam core, which I've never done before. And um, I'm going to add it here, wrap from the back side uh, along that tape you saw, and uh, bring that around. And then I'm also going to add, I think, a total of five layers to this bottom ridge along with the core. So... I'm hoping that'll stiffen it up and keep it light. I'm going to get to cutting some fabric and uh, we'll see what I can do with it. Once all the carbon was cut up, I went ahead and mixed up some resin and wetted out the areas that I had sanded. Here you can see I got the part back into the plexiglass mold and I've put a layer already down and that, that's the layer that'll tie the, the foam core into the front of the panel. I decided to do the layup of the foam core off the part and that was because it gave me more access to fold those front layers over the top of it, but also because I wanted to line up that foam core precisely with the lower edge of the already cured carbon panel. And it was easier for me to do that once the carbon was wrapped around it. You can kind of see me doing that here. And so once that uh, that piece of uh, wet layup was, was kind of secured down there. I then had to get the air pockets out from four layers deep. And so there was, there was a lot of squeegeeing involved there, but I managed to do that okay. Once, once I was all set up, I was then able to wrap the piece of carbon that was already set up on the front of the panel around the whole layup. And that just tied the, the entire kind of repair into the whole seat back. Now, if I were able to go back in time, I would have definitely included this foam core in the original layup. Well, that about wraps it up. I am really happy with how that all turned out. I've got my mismatched seat backs, which will be underneath cushions and covers, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, same with the repair on the rear seat, out of sight, out of mind. On the next build video, I'll be doing more carbon fiber parts for my Bearhawk Fort Place. So tune in next time. I'll see you then.